Uh, hello everyone, I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing this fine day? Uh, yeah, nearing midweek here, get gearing up for the championship weekend and senior bowls right after that. I'm going to be watching that heavily. Know a bunch of people that are going. I decided not to, um, but I will definitely be giving you some updates and some players to watch senior bowl wise. Um, but what I want to talk about for the first half of today's show is apparently... I don't know exactly when it's happening, how it's happening, if he's in town, but the Steelers are interviewing offensive coordinator position, Zach Robinson from the, the, the Rams. And I love it. This is a step in the right direction. I mean, I'm, it's someone from well outside the organization, young, comes from a great background. And first of all, I'm not going to heavily profile every offensive coordinator that they apparently interview for one simple reason, because I've been in buildings, I've been with assistant coaches, and I know if you're not in the building, you really can't analyze that person. I've never met Zach Robinson, but I can tell you about his resume and I like what I've seen. And I like that there, this is the thought process in terms of hiring the next offensive coordinator. So he was a court, he was a quarterback at Oklahoma state, which if you is Mason Rudolph's, uh, Alma mater, obviously. Apparently, they have some sort of relationship that they get along well. Um, he helped them through the draft process, et cetera, et cetera. Oklahoma State quarterbacks that aren't that far apart in age. Cool. Doesn't mean Mason will be back or not, but he would be more familiarity, the better, I suppose. So, considered a very bright head coach who was a very smart quarterback, not a super toolsy great player who cares but a couple of things that's interesting is he did a stint at Pro Football Focus as he was like their quarterback guru at Pro Football Focus, which is a an analytics company that does football stuff. And I love that they would consider somebody with a heavy analytics background. I mean, I think this organization needs that in a big way, a different way of thinking. But even better is his tutelage is under Sean McVay with the Rams, who might be the best offensive mind in the league. He's certainly near the top. Got a ton out of that team this year. I thought he should be coach of the year. I don't think he'll win it. But he's an aggressive offensive mind. Comes from the Shanahan tree. But I think his version of the Shanahan offense is a little more physical, a little more run-oriented, going back to Todd Gurley, bigger back-oriented than Kyle Shanahan, for example, or certainly what's going on in Miami. Um so I, I think this is a really exciting hire. And one thing I'll tell you is the Rams defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris, who's excellent, and he's also interviewing for head coaching jobs around the league, I know is one of Mike Tomlin's best friends in the business. So I'm sure Raheem gives Robinson a huge stamp of approval too. I'm sure McVay and Tomlin know each other as well, but I, I do know that him and Morris are super tight. So that's huge. And those guys practice against each other in camp and all that good stuff. So Zach Robinson is apparently going to be in the mix for the offense coordinator job. I mean, who knows when we'll find these things out, but I think it's a really encouraging first sign for that hire, whether he gets a job or not. So I like it. With the NFL playoffs here and in the swing of things and the NBA season in full swing, Bet Online has you covered with all the up the second odds, news, and scores. With additional odds, lines, trends, and information on both desktop and mobile, you can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today and get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, all caps, all one word, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So I did my final Steeler stats. We went over some of the special team stuff earlier in the week. I want to talk about a little bit of Steeler passing game stuff, or just you know, some t touch on some of the offensive stuff here since we were talking about Zach Robinson to start the show. So these are all season long stats, not including the playoff game, unless I specify differently about the playoff game. But mostly these are just season long stats against the rest of the league, the other 31 teams. 
they only averaged five yards per play for the season. And that was tied with Washington, Chicago, and Denver. Only seven offenses averaged fewer yards per snap than the Steelers start to finish. It's just not good enough, you know? I mean, it, did it get a little better as the season went on? Yeah. Was it better after Canada? Yeah. Was it better with Rudolph? Yeah. And that's encouraging, but you're still, over the course of a season, near the bottom of the league. And yards per play, to me, is very, very telling. When breaking down who was on the field for each 2023 snap, and by that I mean when these 11 are out there, their age down to the month and the day has been calculated, the Steelers' offense was younger than all but two teams, Green Bay and Indianapolis. So the average snap taken by an offensive player was by a 26.2-year-old player. Again, that's only older than Green Bay and Indy. So that's encouraging. I mean, last year, I think they were 32nd or first, however you want to say it, the youngest. And they were first, they were first or second. This year, they're still right in that neighborhood. So it's still a very young group. I mean, guys like Daniels are younger than you think, you know. So they're, they're coming along here, you know, and I think that that's what you want to hear, at least on the side of the ball. There's room for improvement. Most of these guys haven't hit their – their prime years yet. And you'll probably add a little youth as well. Pittsburgh passed the football on 52.7% of their snaps. That was the 28th lowest rate in the league or the fourth highest rushing, however you want to look at it. So that's a bad thing. No team threw the ball a lower percentage on the road than the Steelers. In the first half of games, they ran the ball 43.4% of the time, the third highest rate in the league. In the second half of games, they ran at 46.5% of the time, the seventh highest rate. Only the Eagles ran the ball at a higher rate than Pittsburgh inside the 10-yard line, as well as inside the 20-yard line. When leading by seven or more points, only the Cardinals and Falcons ran the ball at a higher percentage than the Steelers. When trailing by seven or more, only the Falcons ran the ball at a higher clip with 10 or more yards to go in the down, third and 12, second and 13, whatever. The Steelers ran the ball at the NFL's highest rate. They were second behind Miami on run percentage on first downs. Miami's great offense. Like some of these are not bad. Some of them just scream, we don't trust our quarterback. Some of them are screaming, we just want to be a physical ball control team. But that's a lot of running <laughs> in, all t- in all situations. Another one, in terms of how fast a pace the Steelers offense played, seconds between plays run. Only five offenses played at a slower rate than the Steelers. When trailing on the scoreboard, only three offenses played slower. Now, let me stop there. That bothers me. Like, to me, that's a bad reflection on Tomlin. Like, Maybe you're only down one in the first quarter, you know, a field goal in the first quarter. But in general, if you're losing, you got to pick up the pace. You know what I mean? Only the Bengals played at a slower rate than Pittsburgh than when possessing a seven-plus point lead. But they were also the fourth slowest team when trailing by seven or more points. So pretty much played slow no matter what. I don't love that when you're losing. I mean, that's basically the cut the chase there. The Texans were the only team with fewer turnovers than the Steelers, who had 16. And Pittsburgh's plus 11 turnover differential is better than every team except the Ravens and Giants. Over the past two seasons, the Steelers are 17-4 and four in games in which they did not throw an interception. This past year, they were 9-2 and two in games they did not throw an interception. Not a lot of flukes there, you know, but you also have to get more aggressive. They were Steelers were 27th in first half scoring, averaging just 8.8 points scored in the first half of games. In terms of EPA, Steelers offense was 26th in EPA in the first half and 16th in the second. On early downs, first and second downs, Pittsburgh's offense was 19th in EPA. On third and fourth downs, they were 27th. The Steelers converted a set of downs into a new set of downs at a rate of 67%, 
league average is 70%. Pittsburgh's average time of possession was 29 minutes and 38 seconds for the season, but it was 33-32 over their last four regular season games. However, the Steelers were fifth best on the road at 31-19. In terms of plays run per game, the Steelers over 26. They only averaged 60.5 plays run per game. So on a per drive basis, the Steelers were 26th in yards per drive, 28th in points per drive, 28th in touchdowns per drive, and 29th in three and outs per drive. Only three teams averaged more three and outs per drive than the Steelers. All right, that's going to do it. We'll come back with some more offensive stuff tomorrow. Breaking down more specific players. Maybe we have more coordinator news, et cetera, et cetera. All right, take care.